hurricanes. I don't. I know nothing about hurricanes. Let's use the computer. Typhoon Tom. Oh hey, how you doing? I see you're looking for information about hurricanes. Tell you what, the lab's open. You want to come on in? How did I get here? Little thing we call hurricane magic. Hi, how you doing? Name's Typhoon Tom. Glad to meet you. Hi. What's your name? I'm Stormy. Glad to see you. I tell you what, I understand you're trying to write a paper about hurricanes. Can you tell me? I know a lot about hurricanes. Can you tell me what you're trying to write about? Um, here. Okay. How hurricanes work. Why are hurricanes named? How hurricanes are tracked? What are the hurricane dangers? And how can I get ready? Tell you what, this is going to be a piece of cake. First, let's step to the lab and see how hurricanes work. Hurricanes are powerful storms that have a few key traits. First, they develop in warm areas over water. They can be enormous storms, nearly 600 miles across, and they have to have winds of 74 miles an hour or greater. Any less, these storms are in hurricanes, but called tropical storms. Oh, and remember that hurricanes and tornadoes are different things. Hurricanes can last for days and travel across oceans, while tornadoes last a very short time and can do tremendous damage. Ooh, are you gonna make hot chocolate? No, we're not gonna make hot chocolate, but I am gonna show you how hurricanes get their power. What is going on in this hot pot right now is we've got water that's actually very hot and it's releasing steam up into the air. We're putting the energy into the water and it's making the water evaporate. This is what happens over a hot body of water like the ocean or the uh, Gulf of Mexico. What happens is the air goes up, it starts to get cold up in the atmosphere, like this cold bowl full of ice. And what happens is as the steam starts to hit the bottom of it, it'll start to condensate. You'll actually start to see water developing. This is called condensation. That warm air loaded with moisture is pushed high into the atmosphere. When this air up high gets cold enough, the water starts to come out of the air in a process called condensation. As the water cools, the energy that evaporated the water in the first place is released, pushing the clouds even higher. More air has to rush in from the surface to replace this lofty air, and that's how our hurricane's winds are powered. What is that? Is that rain? Yeah, it sure is. It's just like rain. What happens is the moisture uh, condenses when it hits the cold surface and it starts to fall back to the surface. That's just like rain. Cool. But can hurricanes form anytime? Well, they need some specific conditions. Come on this way, I'll show you. Well, you need the right conditions to make a hurricane. There has to be the right amount of warm water to a certain amount of depth. You have to have a certain wind pattern that takes place. Light winds all blowing in the same direction. You have to have the right kind of thunderstorms in the Caribbean and off the coast of Africa. And that basically means that hurricane, the conditions are right in the North Atlantic for hurricane season from June 1st to November 30th. But sometimes you get storms that form outside the season and those are the ones you have to watch carefully. Hurricanes spin opposite of the direction of the clock or counterclockwise north of the equator. South of the equator, the storms spin the other way in the direction that the clock hands travel or clockwise. And now you know. Typhoon, I don't understand. My teachers want to know why hurricanes are named, but we don't usually name storms, do we? Because they can cause so much damage and they get kind of confusing sometimes. People decided to give them name. Just think about it. If you had a storm moving north of the Atlantic and one moving west of the Atlantic threatening Florida, you'd want to know more about the one moving west. This way, by using names, you can figure out which one's doing what. Oh, I understand now. But how do they choose what names? Well, there's a group called the World Meteorological Organization. It's part of the United Nations. And the meteorologists over there have created six lists of names, and they use them every year. Before 1953, storms were named after the date they hit, like the Great Labor Day Hurricane of 1935. That idea, while an improvement, still really stunk. From 1953 until 1978, hurricanes were given girls' names. This is a much better idea because the names were a lot less confusing, so in 1979, boys' names were added to the list as well. Now, people were happy because both boys and girls were well represented on the list. Has your name ever been used for a hurricane? Will your name be used in the future? To find out, visit the National Hurricane Center's hurricane name page at www.nhc.noaa.gov slash about names. 
www.shtml to check out the list. Earlier you said something about a hurricane going north of the Atlantic and west of the Atlantic, but how do you know which way they're going? Well, meteorologists have a lot of different ways to check out which way hurricanes are moving. Um, the first one that they use is radar. Now, radar is a really technical thing. It uses a radio pulse, which actually propagates from the radar station. <laughs> and we're taking a look okay, at the whoa, Doppler. Whoa, 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 whoa. Please, English. I don't understand. Okay, let's see if we can figure this out a little bit more easily. Um, how do I explain radar? How do I explain radar? I'll tell you what. Do you want to be the radar base station? Sure. Congratulations. I'll tell you what, come on over here. You are the radar station and you're gonna be shooting radio waves at me, a raindrop. A radar station is made up of two parts. <laughs> And the first one is a radio wave emitter. This gun shoots radio waves out from the radar emitter away from the station. Those that hit raindrops actually bounce back to the radar receiver where they show in great detail where hurricanes and their rain are located. I think we've had enough fun with the radar for one day. Oh, come on. The next tool that meteorologists use to track hurricanes are satellites. And if you want to see those, you're going to have to look way up there. Orbiting around the Earth and looking down at us are a group of weather satellites. Launched by rockets into space, these satellites give us around-the-clock coverage of what the weather is up to. In fact, with our weather satellites, it's almost impossible for a hurricane to sneak up on an unsuspecting coast, something that happened all too frequently before satellites. Whoa, you have the coolest toys. Just a little thing we call hurricane magic. Okay, so we track hurricanes with satellite and radar, but how else can we track them? There's one other way, and it's really going to sound kind of crazy, that people actually fly airplanes right into the middle of hurricanes. In the middle? You got it. Roll film. Both the Air Force Reserve and the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, known as NOAA, fly planes into hurricanes to find out more about these storms. Big, strong, propeller-driven airplanes are used because they are tougher than jets and aren't as affected by heavy rains. They use a combination of instruments mounted to the plane and things called dropsons, which are really dropped from planes, to record the pressure, temperature, and wind speeds inside the storms. This is the most accurate way to see just how strong a hurricane truly is. That looks really dangerous, but they're brave. They really are. They fly out into every storm they can reach with those airplanes. And the information they gather is just really valuable in finding out how strong storms are and where they're headed. Cool. But I have one question. It's about radar. <laughs> uh. A hurricane's position is measured with the latitude and longitude numbers. Latitude lines circle the globe from east to west, allowing you to find locations north or south of the equator. Longitude lines run from the North Pole to the South Pole and show locations east and west. With latitude and longitude numbers, you can find any spot on the Earth, especially where a hurricane's eye is located. Now you know.